Hey guys, I'm back to another game review. Today we're taking a look at Infamous Second Son, released on the PlayStation 4. Infamous Second Son was announced during a Sony press conference on February 20th, 2013. This trailer got me really excited for this new Infamous title that was going to be a PS4 launch title. Turns out that the game was not a launch title, but it was pushed back to March 2014. Sucker Punch Productions was actually planning to go and make this game since 2010. Sony allowed them to go and develop a new Infamous game for the PS4, as long as Sucker Punch gave Sony feedback on the hardware evolutions they would like to go and see on the PS4. Second Son takes place 7 years after the events of Infamous 2. The RFI explosion should have killed all of the conduits, but a few of them survived. This organization named the Department of Unified Protection, or the DUP, was formed because they feared the abilities these conduits had. They also renamed these conduits as bioterrorists. The DUP forced many conduits into hiding because of this. Delson Rowe is the new character you'll be controlling this time around, and he's very sarcastic. I personally knew that I was going to like his character from the start of the game. Delson finds himself as a sort of conduit sponge, meaning that when he comes in contact with another conduit, he learns their backstory along with their ability. Delson finds who the director of the DUP is, Augustine, who is the main antagonist this time around, and she's a very hateful character. She came off as a jerk when I first met her, and really, I think that's what they were aiming for. Delson doesn't really like what Augustine is doing with these conduits, and he wants to go and put a stop to it. There is a little bit more to the story than that, but I don't exactly want to give too much away since Infamous is really revolved around the story. Now, since I played this game two times around, you know, once good, once bad, the story is overall pretty good, I think. It's not anything, you know, amazing and won't exactly blow your mind, but I think it does get the job done. The ending for both sides is also really interesting. I really like the good ending, it had me really satisfied on everything I accomplished. The bad ending, however, it really did leave a bad taste in my mouth. I, I, I didn't really like it, honestly, because it it really did have me, you know, regret, you know, my decisions I made, you know, the actions I did. And if that's what the developers were aiming for, they definitely accomplished it with me. Also, Trey Baker, you are great and on everything you do, honestly, because he had a lot of hype behind him for this game. And... Since he already played Booker DeWitt, you know, Joel from The Last of Us, and the Joker from Arkham Origins, just to go and name a few roles he already played within the previous year. And he did a great job as Delson, in my opinion, you know. He really did bring the character to life, and yeah, uh, if they got another guy, you know, to go and play Delson, it probably wouldn't be as good, honestly. So, Del uh, Troy Baker, good job playing as Delson. <laughs> Since you control Delson Rowe this time around, you get new powers, four actually. You get to control smoke, neon, video, and concrete. All these powers work identically between each other. Each power has their own advantages and disadvantages. Smoke, for example, is pretty good at taking out enemies quickly, but it's hard to go and climb buildings without the use of a vent. Really, all these powers might be similar between each other, but they all come in handy at one point or another, I find. Parkour is not recommended in this game, I find, because really with the simple tap of the circle button, you will be climbing buildings within mere seconds with neon and video. Personally, I like video more because you get so far so quickly, and really, even though you get all four power-ups to your disposal at the end of the game, each power is very limited when you're in battle. Now, what I mean by that is that you'll find yourself recharging your power that you have currently, or you'll have to go and switch to another power to go and keep fighting. This really wasn't a big issue for me personally, but I thought I'd mention it anyways. The karma system returns as a series staple. Whichever side you choose, good or bad, your goal is to go and stop Augustine still. And really, depending on the side you chose, you get different choices, you get different colored clothing to wear, you get different powers you go and upgrade and choose from, and really it's all the infamous goodness you know and love. A small pet peeve I have with the new karma system is that by the end of the game when I was good, I wasn't 100% good or a true hero, which sucks because in previous Infamous games, you are 100% good by the end of the game. With playing as the bad side, I actually found myself being 100% bad by the end of the game, which is probably because doing bad things is a lot easier than doing good things, so I think that's it. The super ability from Infamous 2 makes a return in Second Son, and, and it's a lot more flashy, it's a lot better, I find. Smoke, you jump in the air, and you come back down and cause a big explosion, like, that is freaking awesome. In order to go and do the super move, however, you need to get 7 good slash bad things, depending on the karma side you chose. 
doing the good side is a lot harder because doing seven good things in combat is a lot harder than doing seven bad things. So yeah, also there is a imaginary time limit on how long it will take you to go and do these seven good slash bad things in order to go, to go and get the super move and how long you could actually hold on to the super move once you get those seven. Like, I remember this one time I had, like, four good things done, and then, like, all of a sudden, like, it was gone. I was like, what happened? Like, I don't even know what was going on, honestly, until I realized there was a imaginary time limit on how long it will take you to go and do these seven good things and seven bad things in order to go and get the superpower. When I play Infamous games, I tend to like the good side more than the bad side, but I think this time around, I like the journey through the bad side more. I think it's because I get the super move a lot more often when I was the bad guy, and side missions in this game range from making graffiti, finding a hidden camera, or shutting down a DUP center. These side missions will award you more karma along with more blast shards to go and collect. Yes, blast shards do make a return, and they act as upgrade points for your powers. And you can go and shoot your powers without aiming for the first time within the series itself, which really I didn't notice until like I was doing this review. With the power of the DualShock 4 now, you will shoot with the L2 and R2 button and drain using the touchpad. Throughout the game, you will find prompts using the touchpad to go and open gates or destroy DUP trucks or something like that. I honestly don't mind the touchpad functionality since it really didn't get in the way. Some complain that the side missions get repetitive, which I could see why if you're doing multiple side missions at a time. The camera within the game didn't become a huge problem until the final boss. The amount of times I got screwed over by that camera and I had to restart from the last checkpoint was really aggravating. A sigh of relief was when I finally finished the final boss, and that was amazing. The gameplay is overall pretty good, I find. With story missions being engaging and side missions breaking the pace once in a while, the gameplay for Second Son is really good, especially for an infamous title. Second Son is probably the best looking PS4 game right now. It's running at 1080p, 30 frames per second, and the game looks stellar. Only if the game ran at 60 frames per second, this game would really, really look amazing. I did get the occasional frame drop here and there, especially when there was a lot going on. Exploring this amazing world of Seattle, this really pretty, gorgeous world. The game just looks amazing, outstanding, and great. Just awesome. Also, the powers look really visually impressive, neon especially. The game presentation-wise is pretty good overall, and the soundtrack is not that bad either. Critics said that this game is pretty good overall, with the game selling over 1 million copies within 9 days and making it the fastest infamous game out of all of them. I would highly recommend this title, especially to anyone that owns a PS4 or looking into getting one. This is a must-have to any PS4 owner in my opinion. And really, this is the best Infamous game out of all of them. And if you haven't played the Infamous franchise, you really don't need to play the past Infamous games to play this one. Because, like I said earlier within the review, this takes place like 7 years after the events of Infamous 2. So, really, you're, it's, it's really like a whole new experience, honestly. Which is, you know, the established franchise still there. So, yeah, that is all I have for today. Thank you guys for watching this video. I had a lot of fun playing the game two times over to go and get my full opinion on the game, you know, good and bad. So, yeah, and that is all I have for today. Thank you guys for watching this video again. I'll see you guys next time with more videos. Game on, gamers!